The Nigerian Senate has received a request from President Mohamed Buhari for approval to pay Kogi state government a sum of 10.069 billion naira as refund spent by the state on behalf of the federal government. And the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development says Nigeria has attained food sufficiency. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Director, Projects Coordinating Unit at the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Maimuna Habib, has said that Nigeria has attained food sufficiency. She stated that the country has added the value of its commodities from the north to the south. What is food sufficiency? What does it mean in this case, as there are still a lot of people without enough to eat? And also, in addition to sufficiency, is there food security? Joining me to talk about this are two uh, learned gentlemen, Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. And of course, we have Lulu Elegbe, political analyst. Pleasure to have your company Good this evening. Good evening. Okay. Are we really, do we have food sufficiency? Let, let's start from the basic food sufficiency and food security. What is there a difference? Yeah, I think there's a difference. Uh, food security will mean that um, you have been able to curtail all the hazards that would have led to a shortfall. For example, if you have a good pest control against uh, the weevils or the insects that eat crops, if you have the right kind of weather, you do not have drought, you don't have natural disaster. It can be said that the crops will grow and yield. And then along that line, there's food security. But if you talk about food sufficiency, sufficiency on the other hand will mean that you have a system where you have enough food to go around, and then the people also have the means to find this food and to purchase them. So when you're talking about sufficient, it could be in the abundance of food or the right quantity of food in circulation. Okay. But the security of it will have to do with that you have been able to curtail all the hazards that could lead to a shortfall. Thank you for that clarification, because a lot of persons might not actually know there is a distinction between the two terms. Oh, I'll start with you, the first question. Are we food sufficient as a nation. Do you agree with that director? No, I don't. Um, and it's not, the, it's not the first time that we're hearing these kinds of comments from the administration. Yes, the, this particular administration has probably done a lot better than um, the preceding administrations when it comes to agriculture and growing food and and that particular um, industry, but it doesn't mean, but are we at a point where we can say we're, um, we've achieved sufficiency? To me, even the idea of it sounds ridiculous because, I mean, achieving food sufficiency means so many things. There are so many, there are so many hoops we need to jump through to be able to say that we've achieved, we're at a point where, um, where we've achieved food suffi um, for sufficiency. Let me give an example. I think yes, it was yesterday or the day before, there was a minister who was, I can't remember which ministry it was, um, at a, an event saying that, saying the same thing, that we've achieved food sufficiency yeah. and that people saying there's hunger in the land, he finds it laughable, there's no hunger in the land. I mean, come on. It's, so when we start to hear things like that, we know what the realities are in Nigeria. The idea, when we talk about things like rice, things like sugar and these sorts of things, yes, we have local manufacturing and that's increasing, and which is a good thing. But what I've never really understood is why locally produced goods are in some cases more expensive than the imported ones. 
I agree completely 100% that if we're able to grow these things locally, we should. But it doesn't make any sense to me that, I mean, for, forget, let, let, let's just look at the financial element of it, right? I want to buy a 50 kg bag of sugar. I think the Dangote brand or one of those brands cost about 17, 18,000 Naira. Now, the other brands that are brought in from outside the country cost about 13, 12,000 Naira. So why on earth, as much as I want to, I want to um, use the Made in Nigeria products, why on earth would I pay six, 7,000 Naira more just because I want to do that? It doesn't make any sense to me. So when this, um, when this um, person says that we've achieved food sufficiency, the prices will soon drop, I can't wait to see that happen. When the prices do drop, then you can start to talk about the about a lot more people using or, or consuming these products. But right now, it's too expensive for a lot of people. So you can't say that you've achieved food sufficiency when a good portion of the population still cannot afford the locally made products, which she, for me is a, is a very she, strange dynamic. She said dynamic. something about the fact that we don't know because we're, they're not, we're not blowing our own trumpet well enough. So we Could that be what? a reason? Let, let me tell you that yeah. we're not, that there is food sufficiency, but mm. a lot of people do not know because we are not blowing our own trumpet enough. So how does she know there's food sufficiency? Well, because she is in the know. ministry. I think she's looking at the issue one-sided, or Absolutely. he's looking at the issue one-sided. He or she. Is a she? Uh, looking at the issue one-sided. First of all, when you talk about food sufficiency, or item sufficiency, not just food. You have to look at costs. You have to look at price. You have to look at equilibrium. Those are economic tools. They are tools for economic analysis when you talk about uh, sufficiency. Now, if you look at uh, the rate of inflation and then the level of poverty, okay, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the claim, you find that, that it is not an item or food is not sufficient where the means to get the end yeah. is not equal, okay? Now, you have um, like the ban, uh, the foreign rice and some other foreign items, they close the border rather. Uh, the locally produced rice, the costs have now increased so high. Now, people are asking why. The reason is because demand have increased and the natural consequence of that is that um, price will rise. But what we are not getting right is that the means, okay, the, the, the take home pay, get the minimum wage of an average worker. And then the fact that even the minimum wage bad enough is not good enough, other variables that are supposed to preserve the wages are not in place. There is no mortgage system. There is no public school, um, primary health care. These are variables. If you look at Abraham Maslow's theory of need, it talks about the hierarchies of need, where the physiological need is the first, what to wear, what to eat, shelter, and all that. So you're in a country where there's no mortgage system for, for shelter. You don't have food stamp for people who are indigent. In, in all of these analysis, then, okay? Yeah, no, what I'm saying is that you can't talk about sufficiency Without where there's a wide gap. Issues. Where there's a wide gap between the economic possibility, okay? The level of poverty is high, okay? And then you look at the number of people who are poor in Nigeria who cannot even assess um, their daily bread vis a vis the claim. You'll find out that it, it is. You are talking about sufficiency in a very narrow perspective. You are not talking about sufficiency the right way. What is government impute in, in food security and food sufficiency? Is it by funding agriculture, subsistent agriculture, to feed over 200 million people? So we, we, we are, they, 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 it, there is no proper research on that statement. It's a statement but you would expect that the somebody head. that is with the director at the Federal Ministry of Agriculture... They should show us the survey. Have, okay, uh, well, if, if, if you both seem to uh, hold the position that we do not have food sufficiency, 
as it stands right now. So where are we exactly? Are we going to get there? Is there an improvement, rather, from where we were before? Not just an ordinary um, um, improvement, but something upscale. Because even the, the issue of uh, food uh, insufficiency or scarcity of food, this conversation started even before the advent of insurgency. And then the headsmen came in. And then the banditry came in. And if you look at, like, Benue State, for example, most of the villages are completely decimated. They can't go to their farms. Some of them are just recovering. Okay, we, we, when you we, check all that, okay. you cannot have all those kind of security conditions that make this kind of declaration without a survey, without a chart, without no evidence empirically to convince us. So, you can't just make such. You see, in your, in your, in your, in your evidence, assessment, where are we? If you do not agree and you say there are no data to show that there is food sufficiency as is being claimed by this government official, where are we? I think we are still in uh, scarcity and food insufficiency because if you, if you, we're not, if, because maybe speaking for, for the middle class or the bourgeois, the upper class, but I do not think he's speaking for the entire country. But these are government officials. This administration have consistently said they've been working in, in, in at Rice, for instance. Yeah. They've trumpeted how well they've been able to revitalize that industry and give farmers more hope on, you know, revenue mm -hmm. to do their job. So if we, if. If she is saying there is food sufficiency to a large degree and the borders have been closed, she is claiming that this has m compelled us to eat locally made. But that's, but that's not even, I mean, all you have to do is look at the, like I think, like he mentioned, these claims are being made from a very, very narrow perspective. The guy that spoke yesterday that said, um, similar to what she said, that we've achieved food sufficiency um, he laughs when people say there's hunger in the land. Yeah. And so then he made another well. comment that um, farmers are making money, that he said he himself is a farmer, he, um, he knows how much he sold, maybe it was rice or something. But that's, that's, that's where the problem is. He's looking at it from that perspective. But if you spread this out, we, I think we, 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 there's a danger in Nigeria, right, of, of looking at things from what is happening in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. Those, are not, those three places are not representative of the rest of the country. And when you look at the economic realities, can people afford these things? Um, right now, the reality is that the locally made foods, as for rice and sugar, I know for a fact, are more expensive than the, the competitors or the, the, the ones brought in, um, the ones, yeah, right. sorry, the, the imports. And it, it, it just doesn't, I mean, why someone who's struggling to eat in the first place, why would he pay more because he wants to eat made in Nigeria food? It doesn't make any sense. So when they start to make these kinds of comments about the sufficiency, um, farmers are making money. Okay, yes, farmers might be making money because of the government's sustained efforts in rice production, for example. But the question is, is that rice getting around the country in a way that people the people who want to eat rice can afford um, to eat that particular rice that is yeah, I think being that grown brings in the, country. In it the does, clarification it, he tried to make yeah, exactly. about and food it doesn't. sufficiency. And let, let's go on a short break. Let's sure. go on a short break. And when we come back, the conversation continues right here on Plus Politics. Don't go away.